Exploring the Universe, Astronomical Motion Have you ever wondered why we have day and night? Or what causes the seasons? Why is it winter in one place in the world and summer in another? This video is going to explore how the movement of astronomical bodies, or things found in space, cause these phenomena. The first question that we're going to explore is what causes night and day? First off, we know that the Earth rotates around the Sun and the Moon rotates around the Earth. And finally, we know the Earth rotates on its axis. So, how does this relate to day and night? The Earth's motion is what causes day and night. The Earth rotates on its axis to make day and night. So as it spins, it completes one spin every 24 hours. Daytime is the side where the sun shines, and nighttime is the side where the sun doesn't shine. So, as the Earth rotates on its axis, the dark side, or the side facing away from the sun, is going to be nighttime, and the light side, or the, the side that's facing the sun, would have daytime. This rotation happens 365 times as the Earth orbits around the Sun, so that's why we have 365 days of the year. So why does the Sun rise in the east and set in the west when we look at the, the horizon? As the Earth spins, it's doing so counterclockwise, which means that the Sun will look like it's rising in the east and setting in the west. The sun doesn't move, but as the earth rotates, it looks like the sun is moving east to west. The second question we're going to look at is what causes the seasons? This is also due to the earth's rotation, but it's mostly due to the earth's um, tilt on its axis. So the earth is tilted on its axis. As it rotates around the sun, the tilt of the earth does not change but the location of the Earth in comparison to the Sun does. This tilt is where the hit, sorry, this tilt and where the Sun hits the Earth causes the seasons. As you can see, when it is winter in the northern hemisphere, it is summertime in the southern hemisphere. This is because the Sun hits the bottom of the Earth, sorry, yeah, the bottom of the Earth, or the southern part of the Earth, um, more directly. Whereas in winter time, it's colder because the sun doesn't hit the Earth, that part of the Earth, as as directly. If you live in some places in the Earth, um, especially in the north or in the north, they have can have 24 hours of daylight and 24 hours of darkness at different times of the year. This is because of where the sunlight hits the earth. So in December, the earth is tilted away from the sun, and even after a rotation, um, the north pole will always stay dark. So after a full rotation, a daily rotation. In June, the earth is tilted towards the sun, and even after a complete rotation of the Earth, or 24 hours, the North Pole still has sunlight. So the, Earth, the sun doesn't rise and it doesn't set in those parts of the world at that specific time. The next question we're going to look at is, why does the moon have phases? So when you look at the sky at nighttime and you look from day one of a month to the 31st of the month, you'll notice that the moon, um, what it looks like changes, and those are called the moon's phases. The moon reflects sunlight, and that's why the moon shines. The phases of the moon are caused by how much of the moon's surface faces the sun, and therefore reflects the sunlight. So as you look at this illustration, you'll notice that uh, there is a light side of the moon and a dark side of the moon. So the light side is the actual face of the moon and what we get to see. So you, as it goes through its phases, you'll notice that there's 
a new moon where no light is reflected from the from the sun a waxing crescent so a little bit of light first quarter it's getting larger um, second quarter sorry as you go along second quarter a waning Gibson last quarter and then a waning crescent the phases of the, of the moon are the same at night everywhere in the world because the position of the sun and the moon don't change a noticeable amount from day and night. So if we're here in Porcupine Plain and we look at the moon, it would be the same, it would look the same, but upside down in the southern hemisphere, say if we were someplace in New Zealand. It takes approximately, uh, takes the moon approximately 27 days to orbit the Earth. So as the orbit of the moon changes, or the location in the orbit changes, um, that's when we see different phases of the moon. So like I said, the moon is upside down in the southern hemisphere, even though it would be at the, they would ha see the same last quarter or the waxing, cre um, waxing crescent, but it would just be upside down in the southern hemisphere, just because of the location of the moon in comparison to the earth and the sun. The next phenomenon we're going to look at are eclipses. Eclip eclipses are sights to be seen. Uh, many people will spend time looking at them and watching them just because they are kind of a neat phenomenon to look at. But what causes this phenomenon? So there are two types of eclipses. There are solar eclipses and there are lunar eclipses. And we're going to learn in the next slide, or next part of the video, what causes both of them. So first off, a solar eclipse um, is when the moon is directly between the earth and the sun, and that's when the moon blocks the light from the, from the sun. So we see, um, it's like the sun disappears to us. So a partial solar eclipse is when the sun is only partially blocked and a total solar eclipse is when the sun's completely blocked. An annular solar eclipse is when the sun and moon are lined up precisely. So we won't see these all of these solar eclipses in a year. Um, it depends on again the location of the moon in comparison to the earth's orbit and in comparison to the sun the um, Earth's orbit around the Sun and then the Moon's orbit around the Earth as well. So when you look at the picture on this this part of the video, in this part of the video, you'll notice that um, there's a shadowy part uh, and that is what we would see as the Moon blocking the Sun. So in a partial part, a partial solar eclipse you almost see a ring around the sun. In a total solar eclipse, the sun is completely gone and we, we don't even know it's in the sky. And then um, the annual solar eclipse, that's where they're precisely lined up. So that's, again, a type of total solar eclipse. The other type of eclipse is a lunar eclipse. Now this is where the Earth blocks the sun from shining on the moon. And we learned that earlier the moon shines because it reflects the um, light of the sun onto the, back onto the earth. So a partial lunar eclipse is when the moon is partially blocked from our view by the earth's shadow, whereas a total lunar eclipse is where the earth's shadow darkens the entire moon. So again, you'll see um, the shadowy part, the umbra, that means it's completely blocked or shaded. Um, and then the penumbra is when we can see we can see parts of the moon, but not um, not all of it. So someone may ask, can a lunar eclipse happen at any phase of the moon? So a lunar eclipse can only happen when the moon is full, because the moon only shines um, when the sun reflects off of it. So the moon's orbit is tilted from the Earth's and that's why we don't see a lunar eclipse every time there's a full moon. Because if um, the Earth, if the Earth blocked the Sun completely um, in a full moon, we would never see that full moon. So if you want to go back, you can look at the phases of the moon, and that would make it more clear as to why we only um, we only can see it um, certain times. 
What I would like you to do now is to pause this video and go to the second video found on Google Classroom to watch an animation of a solar and lunar eclipse. This will help solidify your understanding of the position between the sun and the moon and the earth and um, what is blocked out um, and why those those eclipses occur. Now that you've finished watching the video and you have a better understanding of a lunar and solar eclipse, what you need to do is you're going to complete a formative assessment. Your formative assessment for this um, astronomical motion will include choosing two um, phenomenons that were discussed in this video and being able to summarize or explain them in your own words. Uh, the assignments found on your handout but you can listen to my instructions here as well. What I would like you to do is choose two, like I said, choose two of the phenomenon and be able to explain them using visuals and using words um, so that you understand them. The audience for your uh, your discussion is going to be about a grade three or four student. So just imagine a grade three or four student comes up to you and says, hey, can you explain what, what a solar eclipse is or why that happens or why we have day and night? So again, it doesn't have to be too scientific. So don't just go simply copy and paste the information from the internet. But it needs to be at a level that a grade three or four student would be able to understand, but it has to be um, detailed enough that it gives a full explanation. So my in, my in this video, my explanations were very brief and went through it quite quickly. You may have to break it down further to explain um, in a series, using a series of pictures or um, putting a little bit more detail. If you would like to go back or you feel that you need more information to be able to provide an a explanation, you can look in your textbook on page 316, I believe, to about 320. Um, all of these are some are, are all of these phenomena are discussed in the textbook. So you can go back and get some more information if you feel you need to do so. Um, you can also look on the internet, but again, like I said, don't um, just simply copy and paste information from the internet because it's not that's not what I would like you to do. I'd like you to be able to explain this to a grade three or four student.